What's going on everyone? Matthew here with Matthew Specialized Detailing. I really appreciate you guys watching. Today in the shop, we're working on this Jeep Patriot. This is my neighbor's car and he used to be involved in paint and collision work, you know, years ago. And this is his daughter's vehicle and he wanted to just take on this project as a DIY for himself to repair the rust, put some Bondo in and paint it himself. So he did a really good job of laying down the paint and doing a spot repair in this area. But now he's left with all of the texture from the painting and he wants me to color sand this and make it match the rest of the vehicle. So I did a test spot a few weeks ago and you can kind of see here, even on camera, this is a spot where I tested and I sanded. You can hear it's kind of smooth right in this area. And as, as we go this way, you can kind of feel, well, you can't feel, but I can feel, but you definitely can see the haze and the roughness here on this Jeep Patriot. So I wanted to bring you guys along on this journey with me today as I wet sand, level this texture, and bring this gloss back in this area here. Essentially, it's just right located on this quarter panel and a little bit into the bumper. There is some overspray on the glass and a little bit here on the tail lens. So I'm gonna get that together. But I wanted to show you guys this process and show you some of the tools and utensils I'm gonna to use to repair this. Okay, so before we get going here, I just wanted to show you guys some of the tools that I'll be using today. I'm gonna to start with 1500 grit sandpaper here to level the texture as step one. Then step two, I'm gonna come back and sand again with 2500. And for my final step, I'm gonna use 3000 grit Trizac paper. I've laid out a couple different blocks. I think this is maybe more than I need, but these are KXK blocks, a real little rid stick. These are Jason Kilmer's custom little baby blocks. And then um, the gentleman that actually owns this vehicle 3D printed me these, and these are super cool. I'm looking forward to test these out because these will be what we use to help roll the sandpaper through here, through these little drops, okay? So you can kind of see here how I need to sand through all of this. So I might actually, I know I laid out 1500, but in these areas here, I might take a thousand grit or maybe 800 to power through that because it's pretty bad right there. But this is what we're trying to fix today. So let's keep going. I did reach for the thousand grit after I started kind of making my way through with 1500. The clear coat was kind of uh, clogging up the paper pretty quick. And there's some goofy stuff going on here with this paint. Again, I want everybody to be mindful that this was a DIY fix. So the individual that painted this, this, you know, he watched a couple YouTube videos, purchased the paint and um, he fixed the rust in this spot. So I don't know how he laid the paint down and he is trusting me to make it look better than it did before. And is also aware that, you know, a burn or something could happen. I wanted to show you guys this spot here. I am gonna try to sand a little bit more in here. Now this is where the new or fresh paint kind of meets the old paint and that tape line goes all the way down. I probably you probably should have taped it up and met up with this line versus just kind of out at sea so what I'm kind of hoping for here is that when I polish this out and this is all shiny and glossy that this little bit of remnants that remains doesn't jump right out at your eyes but nevertheless this is a perfect vehicle to practice on this is more of a body shop style repair 
and um, I kind of enjoy doing this. So I'm going to reach for the rotary and the wool pad and start machining to see what we can get here. So let's go. Okay, as for tools, I'm always the biggest fan of the rotary. It's what I learned on. It's what I know best. And I'm going to start with a five inch and a wool pad and the three inch. The rotary does a perfect job, especially rolling in these drops. Definitely does a much better job. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to be using uh, old Burke Cut for my first step. And then when I'm done with my rotary work here, I'm going to use the uh, old Burke Sole. Uh, likely with a DA, but actually I haven't really used this much with the rotary, so I'm going to try this first. But of course, I still am going to finish my final step with a rotary, so I'm going to start buffing and see how it comes out. I'm excited. Let's do this. This is after sanding and buffing. And it looks really good. Now, for a DIY paint job, and for me to sand and buff this out, I am satisfied with the results. However, you can see right there, it's a little foggy. This is where the paint is starting to get thin, right in that area. So, because of that, it's not able to get the same level of finish that I normally would out of OEM paint but keep in mind this was a kind of home repair home paint job and for what it is and how it looks now I'm satisfied and I know the customer will be too that blend line that we were looking at before is not so easy to see kind of different light you can kind of tell but it is a lot harder to see so that is why I didn't over sand in that area but at a glance when you stand back and you look it has some balance it has some consistency even though there is a touch of fog in that back quarter so this is a fun little project and uh, I always like to say there's a lesson in everything so I'm happy I was able to power through this, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.